in this episode I want to show you the things I upgraded to the suspension and brakes of the track car. I started out with throwing away all the stock components and installing upgraded parts everywhere. I swapped out the control arms and front struts, I installed the front anti-roll bar and increased the size of the front disc brakes. I also replaced the rear suspension module which includes a disc brake conversion stiffer springs, better shock absorbers, and also an anti-roll bar. I'm changing the lower control arms from this one to this one. And the difference might not be immediately obvious. I mean, this one actually looks thinner than this one. But the main issue is, is this one does not have the space needed for the drop links for the anti-roll bar, and this one does. So, hence I'm changing the base model version to the GTI model version. Don't mind the mess in here. I mean, this is kind of a storage space right now since I'm working mostly under and around the car. And this is actually quite, I think, a design flaw with this car is that the nuts for the lower control arm are in fact in the interior and you would normally have to remove the floor mat and everything to get to them so that's a good thing everything's pretty much gutted in here right now I'm also replacing the brake booster so this is the one from the base model car and this is the one from the engine donor and as you can see it's actually just substantially bigger and it will give a lot more like braking effort like help with braking effort so it will give a lighter pedal feel and that's something I do like here you see me installing the brake booster first clip it on the pedal and then install the nuts on the rear After that comes the brake master cylinder and make sure that the seal on the back is still there and still in good shape because if you don't it might cause a pretty big vacuum leak. One of the first parts in the car that needs to be replaced is the front brake line brackets. The stock ones look like this but if you add the GTI suspension with the drop link for the anti-roll bars mounted to the strut the mount won't clear this and it will hit so to fix this this bracket needs to be moved a bit and you could custom make this by cutting this in half and welding it back on but there's a better method method of doing this because the 106 and Saxo cars actually come with the exact right bracket as standard so you can just bolt it on and the only modification to the bracket is that this is a hook on the on those cars that hooks into the frame but if you flatten it out with a hammer it becomes a bolt hole and it works just perfectly so I'll be installing this right now as one of the first parts to go in the car along of course with this suspension arm the disc brakes use a different brake cable for the handbrake so I'll be replacing the handbrake lever as well because the end on the cable doesn't match luckily the solution is really easy since the handbrake cable that came with the do with like the donor car is the right one for the disc brakes and it fits in this car as well so I'll be replacing that it's just two bolts As you can see the ends on these are quite different. The stock one uses little eyelets on the end of the cable and this one, like the operated one, uses just like blocks on the end of the cable that fall, in, fall into these holes. So I'll just put that in here.
Next up is installing the front suspension. Here you see the strut, which is actually an AX GTI strut with the four lug bolt pattern. In it is the GTI shock absorber and a progressive rate lowering spring that I actually quite like on these cars. I've had multiple with the same kind of spring. First up, I installed the top and put on one nut so it doesn't fall down. Then I push in the drive shaft and install the lower ball joint. The lower ball joint bolt actually uses a 16 and a 17 millimeter spanner and I think it's quite clever because it means you can use one set of tools and not have duplicates to install this bolt. It shows that they actually thought about making this. Next up is installing the steering joint and I have to clamp the joint down a bit because else the ball, the ball inside just rotates. So this is the parts of the rear axle. I took this one apart to check if the center tube was still usable and how it works is this is the center tube on both ends there's these bearing surfaces and then there's swing arms with roller bearings in them and the torsion bar is a spring and this one looks fine however this one has a pretty deep imprint of like rollers in it it's like not smooth at all this is like very wavy surface and that pretty much means that it's ruined since pressing in a new one of these is more expensive than a complete rear axle but this was a spare part anyway so this is just scrap iron now no problem but this is a very common problem with these rear axles and that's you know something to keep in mind that's why I rebuilt the axle on the track car already, it had the same thing on both sides. Let's talk about the brakes for a moment. I replaced the stock 238 millimeter solid front discs by much bigger 266 millimeter vented discs with better calipers, better pads, better everything. I also replaced the 160 millimeter rear drum brakes by 247 millimeter disc brakes, which means the rear disc brakes are now actually bigger than the stock front brakes. I think it's quite an improvement on braking. I also, as, a whole, as part of this whole thing, I went from a 3 stud lug pattern to a 4 stud lug pattern, which means I have a lot more choice in OEM brakes and discs and calipers, everything that all bolt on. And also, it means I have a lot more choice in wheels since the 3 stud wheels are really rare and not all that good. And there's a lot and lot, there's a lot of 4 stud wheels available since all the other cars use the same stud pattern. For the wheels I also decided to go with OEM parts. I'm using the wheels from the Citroen C5 which are stamped alloy wheels. They're really lightweight. They're about four and a half kilo each in the 15 by 6 size. And I put some 195 millimeter wide R-Comp tires on it. It's a big improvement from the 155 millimeter wide stock tires. They're tiny. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more on my channel. Bye!